I want to talk about knowing yourself. What makes you upset? How to control your temper to get what you want? You must understand that life is like a chess. Sometimes you need to know how to play a game. It's not all the time that you need to respond to what is in your heart. It's not all the time that you need to respond to what is in your mind. Sometimes you just have to respond what is in a moment, what works in a moment. So discipline yourself from not holding yourself back from not getting angry can really result in a lot of blessings. A lot of people have allowed emotions and anger to control the decision rather than rationalism, what makes sense in the moment. And much more to, to go deeper. Uh, you see, I was invited somewhere as one of the guest speaker one time. Then um, when I reached there, I found there was no hotel prepared for me. I didn't know where I'm going to sleep. And my time for speaking was also shortened. Yet they were just using my name, promoting so they can get their agenda out there. It's very easy for me to, to quit. So I controlled myself. I said, I'm just gonna get a hotel for myself for a day and I'm gonna go to the meeting. And when I went to the meeting, God used me more than everyone else who was present. So powerfully. And I left with a good name, but that man, who invited me, lost me because I'll never come back the second time. And then the only person called me and said, please, that was powerful. Everybody's talking about it. Can you come back? I will never come back. Look, I have, I controlled myself to keep a good reputation of my character and stubbornness that people are trusting me. Rather than complaining, you didn't give me a hotel. Look, you, you, you're not even giving me enough time to preach. Why did you invite me? So for me, I had to look at the people I was going to minister to. They were innocent. They did not know whoever invited their host's agenda. That was his own agenda. They were sincerely coming so they can be impacted by God. And I looked at those things and I focused and said, Lord, I came to impact those people. I would despise all this. But the, the reason is you learn from that. Next time I get invited, I want to make sure my hotel is secured. I want to make it plain in writing or in verbal as Korea and Korea. And I'll, I'll ask a couple of my assistants to call them to make sure everything is good. Never assume what somebody is thinking. Never judge somebody on. Don't, it, don't judge a book before reading it. You must read the book before you judge it. But most people, they, they judge the book even before they read the contents. But you must understand that sometimes getting upset, it's, it's a language that God is using to you to say, there must be a change. Sometimes God allows you to go through a situation so you can change that situation. Every situation you go through as an individual, you are being assigned by God Almighty to change it. And sometimes you will find yourself in an awkward situation at your working place or in your friends, even in your church. Just know that what is it that God is talking to me about? What is it that I need to change? What attitude do I need to put it on? Attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. Uh, uh, what is an attitude? An attitude is, is a sense of what you're thinking, sense of who you are. That's what the attitude is, is who you are. So you always, need to know that you are a leader. Wherever you go, you must know that you are a leader and you must always, always 
be a shining light. Always be a light, no matter what. Uh, always look for opportunity to bless, look for opportunity to impact. In every situation, say, what can I do? What can I get out of this situation? How can I turn this situation? Of course, you're not being selfish. You have to look at it. How can you maximize the situation? Look at the time of COVID. People maximize that to create, and some people maximize to grow their churches. And people, like during COVID, we ended up inventing Pure Connect, P U R E K O N E C T, a, a, a platform that we have. And we, during the same time, we started our own television, authentic TV, global media. You know, during that time, we started our own videos where you can make short videos. We started stuff. And, and during the same time, I wrote a book called Look at God and the Wonders. You would, you, you would have been waiting to get COVID or waiting to get to things to get worse. Do not obey the circumstances. You ha have always to keep moving. You always, look, if you have bills, stop working. Don't stop working, keep working. Some people, they'll say, look, I have so much bills and I don't know what to do. No, keep doing what you're doing. Ignore your bills. Because when your mind is geared to get something, you will get it. Because you must understand that you work with God and God works with you. Sometimes we are too, in in too independent that we forget that, that even if God has created us with a person of free will, and that type of independency, which he uses, it's our drive to do things. But you also you have to understand that when things are not working, God is there working. God is there doing wonders. Is there once is there he uh, he wants to do amazing things in your life. God wants to do amazing things in your life. God is always working. He never goes to sleep. He never gets tired. Can you imagine? He never goes to sleep and gets tired. But, but you are the one who go to sleep. You are the one who get tired. When you're sleeping, God is working. When you are tired, God is working. So you must always all learn to know yourself. Then you know how to take care of the other person, your partner, your friends, your workmen. One of the things that is so deep is inferiority. Thinking you cannot make a sound decision. You must believe that you can make a sound decision. Do not think mediocre about yourself. You must always channel the energy that you can do all things. Channel the energy that you are the head, not the tail. Channel the energy that only good things happen. You know, I'm, I'm here in uh, uh, Baltimore in Maryland. I checked in a hotel and I found the hotel was dirty. <sighs> you know, when you're so tired, you're checking into the hotel, you just want to sleep, right? And now you find the hotel is dirty. And one other thing, we move into the hotel so that we can be, uh, we can rest. And now they are alive, I find it's dirty. I found the restroom unflushed and it has also the dropping in the restroom. It, lo it looks ugly. Then I said, is this a mockery or what? This is a five star hotel, but the room uncleaned. How did they check me in? Then I said, I have one choice here. To move out of this hotel and get a refund. Or to shout at them. Now, it's in the middle of the night. And I'm not from the area. So the best is like, this is not right. Because I know it's not California. California, they will totally give you a refund. But I mean, 
staying at a university uh, of Maryland hotel. It's a university land by the students. Um, and uh, it's a beautiful place, but it was a mess. Then I just said, okay, instead of trying to complain, let me tell them what's going on and the danger allowing somebody to stay in a hotel without unclean can cause sicknesses and disease when people are calling. So endangering somebody's life. Then I realized that this has been happening in, in this hotel, but I was there to actually change it. So I reported it and said, you don't have to allow these things to, to, to happen to someone else. One, we just went through coronavirus and viruses are still there. Even if it's not coronaviruses, you have to keep your hotel clean because you're responsible in people's lives, healthcare. Okay, they upgraded me into a penthouse. That's good. And now here I am in a penthouse. It's beautiful. And this is, this, this is the penthouse. I'm here and it's beautiful. It's everywhere. But, but I still went back to tell them that you should not ever allow anybody to check in a hotel without checking. I'm just warning you. Then the Lord said, I sent you so you can change the situation because everybody is afraid to complain because the hotel is genetic and is beautiful. But I wasn't upset. I just saw that I had an opportunity to change things. Also, in the midst of that, I ended up staying in a better place. In a, I am on the top room, uh, upgrade, you know, God used the situation to upgrade me. God will always use situation for upgrading because God is a God of it, it. Every situation in your life, it's there to bless you. Every situation in your life is there to take you higher. It's how you respond. The attitude on the situation is the key. All right, wonderful people. I want you to think about what I have said to you. And let me pray for you, my inner circle family. Heavenly Father, I just pray that your spirit, that they'll have a winning attitude. They'll have an attitude to change situation, not situation to change them. Lord, as they listen to this, they, some are going through a different situation. Help them to overcome through the power of the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let them feel loved and needed in Jesus' name as they have committed themselves into this group. In the name of Jesus, amen. So next week we are meeting in person. Next week we are meeting in person. And okay, I got to go to the, to the airport now, but I needed to do this before I go. Um, but next week we're meeting in person. See you.